Hey guys, Mads Play here. So, my Balthier breakdown is about to begin. So, as always, guys, I'll be doing it from multiple perspectives how Balthier is in battle, his passives, the banner for the event, the boss of the event, and then a look at how Balthier is a year later on. So, as always, guys, I will have my timestamps in the description and the top comment. So, hopefully, that'll help you get to the section you want. So with that out of the way, let's start reviewing the leading man. So let's talk Balfir. So Balfir is a gun user and all his attacks are ranged. The whole gimmick behind Balfir is that he's all about stealing the buffs of an enemy. And this is why I don't have that much love for Crimson Edge or Vanille. Because I find that being able to steal a buff is a lot cooler than just dispelling it. So... Balfir does this with his two abilities. His first one's called Snatch Shot. It's a brave hit. It's a brave attack. It's only one hit, but it has a chance to steal a buff from an enemy. It's Balfir's second ability, which is called Graceful Aim. It raises his brave by 1.3 and then inflicts a HP attack. And then after that, has a chance of stealing a buff from an enemy. So I've used Chimera as a perfect example of how Balfir works because I find that Chimera is quite easy to force into using buffs and we're going to demonstrate uh, Balfir's snapshot here which will be allowing me to steal one of Chimera's buffs. So here we go. So as you guys can see I've now stolen one of Chimera's buffs which is pretty cool. And you get for the same duration of turns as well. So I've got 13 turns of this buff, which is pretty cool. I'm worried that I might knock him out though. That's the one thing. So now I'm going to demonstrate graceful aim. And hopefully I can steal a buff here too. The chances aren't that great when you don't have Balfir's relics. That's one thing to note. But um, if you do then you always have a good chance of stealing a buff. Although, um, I don't have buff as exclusive, sadly. But, here we go. Oh, cool. So, as you guys can see, I have taken two of his buffs. So, I, I, have, his bra I have his Brave Regen, and probably one of his attack or defense up as well. And that's pretty much how Balfir plays, and this is why I love him so much. <laughs> and, why, and why I just did not end up falling in love with Vanille or Crimson Edge as many people have. Look, if you guys can see him, now he's lost two of his buffs. And Chimera's buffs is a key component to his strategy on how he fights, and both his buffs are mine. <laughs> and that's why I really like it. But yeah, that's Balthier's battle in a nutshell. He is really good against enemies who use buffs because you kind of steal them and then make Balthier a lot stronger. And his passives are, ge are really geared around him having buffs as well. So you want to maximize the chances of getting buffs. But fortunately, if you're not uh, facing an enemy who doesn't use buffs all that often, then Balfir is not all that useful. And in fact, will be out damaged by a lot of other characters in the game. He's, he's a bit of a niche specialist, but he's still quite powerful overall. And he's quite fast as well. So that's one thing to know. Anyway. Let's say goodbye to Chimera, and everyone, give your thanks to Chimera for being our test dummy today. Yes. Thank you, Chimera. <laughs> Moving on, we'll talk about Balfir and his passives. Balfir uses yellow crystals. I thought I'd just jump right into this one. <laughs> but, yeah. So, Balfir's passives are really good. He has a really good set of passives where I find that all of them are very useful. So let's go through them and have a little chat about them. So at level 5, Balfir learns buff attack up. So if Balfir has a buff, then his attack increases by a small amount. At level 10, Balfir learns snatchshot power up. So that increases the damage that you can deal by using snatchshot. At level 15, Balfir learns Brave Speed Up, so that increases his speed when his Brave is over 50% of the, of the maximum Brave. At level 20, Balfir learns Graceful Aim, and then at 25, he learns Buff Speed Up, 
So he slightly he gets a speed boost when his he has a buff active. So that's pretty good so far. So we've got more attack, more speed when you have a buff, more speed when you're brave over fifty percent, and an increase the damage of snapshot. So even at twenty five, Balfour becomes quite viable already because his passives are all quite good, and you feel his niche purpose very well. More attack and more speed. What more could you ask for? At level 30, he runs Graceful Aim Light. So that means that he gets le slightly less delay action delay when using Graceful Aim. At 35, he learns Snapshot Charge, which gives us one extra use of snatch Snapshot. At 40, we get Graceful Aim Charge. That's so one more use of Graceful Aim. And that's pretty good as well. So as you guys can see from here onwards, uh, not only will Graceful Aim um, make us less delay when using it, we get one extra use as well, and we get one extra use of Snapshot. So, like I always say, I, I think Balfe has one of the best sets of passives of all characters in the game, because it really, really plays to strength. It doesn't get any of that quite useless, or you're like, eh, that's not that great. Uh, and yeah, moving on. At 45, we get buff collector so buff is a maximum brave increases when he has at least two buffs active and that's pretty good as well if we're going to be stealing um buffs then we get a max brave up as well and that means more damage especially more damage with graceful aim because with a higher brave threshold that means that we can go for greater lengths when using graceful aim finally uh buff is lost beauty is called the fastest sky pirate so what happens is, is after using a brief attack you have a chance to inflict small speed down buff on an enemy so and that also two turns so that's a pretty good um debuff speed down is one of my favorite debuffs in the game to inflict while the chances aren't that high with this you still have a good chance of dealing with it anyway and when you do the enemy becomes slower which means more turns for us to attack and if you combine this with Balfour's other passives, which increases speed, like with Brave Speed and Buff Speed, that means you'll be getting in a lot of damage and a lot of turns before the boss can move. And like I say, this is why Balfour is one of my favourite characters, especially in the early part of the game. Next up, we'll be talking about the event banner. So let's talk the banner of this event. So the synergy characters for the Balfour event are Edge and Terra and Balfour also. This banner will feature their relics and as always when I do my reviews of the banner I will be doing it in terms of bronze, silver and gold. Bronze being the weakest relic and gold being the strongest. Now I think this is a really good banner, like a really good banner. So it would be quite good to go through this. The bronze of this banner unfortunately goes to Edge. Um, the problem I have with Edge's Kikuchi Monji is the same thing that I have with Vivi's Oak Staff. In the sense that it's very vanilla. It All it does is it increases the power of shock and that's about it. There's no other added effects to it. So it's quite plain. Now... Shock is really good against machine enemies because they always tend to be weak against lightning and also enemies are weak to lightning as well. But other than that, when the enemy resists elements which becomes more and more common as the game progresses, Edge will not be of use to you at all. But for this event though, this is a fantastic weapon because it will make Edge do crazy amount of damage i'm not kidding you're talking thousands so you really want to go for that if you want to be able to break the boss really easy then edges kikuchi monji does that for you it's a great weapon to have for this event but outside of it yeah it's okay now edge is a synergy character once again far into the future so if you missed out on his stuff here um it might be a bit of a wait unless Global decides to um, have it reoccur in the weekly banner. I mean, this is still available in the auto banners, but yeah, that's your only real source to get this relic. So if you want, if you don't want to get weight and you want edge stuff now, then now's the time to go for it. 
Uh, this one's quite tough because I wish I could give joint gold because I f find that both these weapons are very good. Uh, but I'm going to have to give the main man his time to shine. So Terra, unfortunately, is the silver of his banner. But guys take this silver as being a pseudo gold. It's pretty much a, a, it's a gold tier relic. So yeah but let's go through the falchion so the falchion it raises terra's brave by 1.2 when using meltdown plus and also extends the duration of terra's attack up buff and increases the duration of the defense down debuff that you apply to the enemy now this is a really 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 good weapon it makes terra so much better and she's already a good character without relics but this just makes her even stronger um, getting more brave means that you don't have to accumulate t more brave to use meltdown so you don't have to waste as many turns so it, overall it makes your play quicker and opera omnia is a game that will become more focused on speed so that is a really good weapon to have i can't think of many cons really it's got three different boosts this one so this is how a five star should be in my opinion looking at you edge but uh it's it really is a flawless weapon. Uh <laughs> Terra is a synergy character twice. Uh from now. Uh she will come back quite early into the era of CP5 relics. And right now in JP she's a synergy character for the current event that's going on now. So it is a bit of a wait if you don't get her stuff now and then but also she is appearing and when the level break banner comes in as well so actually she will reoccur quite a bit so don't worry if you miss out on her stuff here there'll be plenty of chances to get it so be good be cool don't worry uh at, inside this event um the meltdown is good because the uh, defense down drop means that we can break the boss easier. The boss does not handle being broken very well, so that is really good in that sense. Also, the boss is more of a DPS kind of a uh, race kind of battle, so meltdown plus making more brave is going to be even better for us. Finally, let's move on the gold of this banner now this goes to the leading man and i decided to give him the gold because it's his event and his weapon is really good so the aldebaran increases the damage of snapshot it raises the success rate of stealing buffs and when you do steal a buff it extends the duration of that buff for one extra turn so that's three different effects which is all really good and aldebaran makes snapshot deal tons of damage and it just makes it a really powerful attack uh being able to increase the success rate of the buff stealing and instead of duration is why i just love the aldebaran and balfir so much more than cloud and vanille one of the weaknesses of the aldebaran is that there is a chance that you won't steal a buff of snapshot which then renders the two other passes quite useless however the increased rate makes it so good that it's quite rare that you don't steal um, a buffs. I mean, this is all anecdotal, of course, but it's quite rare that I miss out on stealing buffs with uh, the um, snapshot boost. And it just makes it a lot more of a better weapon than the Crimson Edge, in my opinion. And, and this is why I... I I'm not a big lover of Crimson Edge because Balfir came along and said I'm the leading man when it comes to stealing buff so I'll show you how it's done in terms of uh, what the older Baran does for this event the boss is very buff centric so unlike other bosses this boss will focus a lot on buffs so Balfir being able to steal his buffs makes Balfir a much stronger character in a really good position to take him down Balfir he has never been a synergy character outside his event so if you miss out on stuff here, it's quite a long wait until he becomes a permanent character again. And that's a really long wait. 
But when he does come back, he does come back with his exclusive, which is pretty good. But yeah. So if you want to get uh, Balfour stuff, now's the time to get it. Because if you don't, it's going to be a long, long wait. But anyway, that's just my review of the banner. I hope this has been helpful to you. And now we're going to move on to the boss. So let's talk the boss of this event. So I call this guy the Omega Weapon Mark II because it, it pretty much is the Omega Weapon, right? Hmm. So the main gimmick of this guy really is that he has two phases. So the first phase is relatively weak, but he uses attacks and when he uses attacks, give himself buffs after he uses attacks. So we're gonna um, show an example of this right now. And as you can see, he gets an attack up buff. This buff lasts for 10 turns. So, as you dispel it, he's going to be quite powerful. So, this is kind of where Balfi comes in. Because Balfi just says, mine, and takes it. <laughs> Thankfully, when you do that, he, and he attacks again, he doesn't gain um, the buff again. So, that's quite cool. So when he loses like a certain amount of HP, he will go into the second phase. You'll know he's in second phase when after you break him, he'll start to fall down and not do anything. So that's when you know you're in, you're in phase two. Now the whole point of phase two, it, it becomes a DPS race because he'll unleash a very powerful attack, which is a AOE um, brave to HP attack. There's lots of hits and there's quite a bit of damage. So what we want to do is we want to kill this guy before he does that. But the thing is, he doesn't spring his attack on you in random. He'll slowly charge us up throughout the battle. This is where Edge is really good here because the shock does a lot of damage to him because he's weak to thunder attacks as well so that's one thing to know that's why I've got um, my random summon here as well so at moments from the battle when his brave is low he will gain um, brave now when he goes to all that's his flame throw attack as I call it it's just a AOE flame brave attack but that's all so now we're going to see what happens when we break him in phase 2 So as you guys can see, he falls down and then can't do much. And phase two actually becomes quite easy compared to phase one. Because when he does this, he can't really do much. But as you guys can see, he's just bringing himself with buffs. So each turn that he, he pulls off without being broken, as you guys may have seen there, he charges up by quite a bit. So he starts at 50%, then he goes to 90%. And then I believe uh, when he's at after 90%, his, he will use the wave cannon the next turn. So if we keep breaking him, he'll keep um, short circuiting or falling down, and that makes him very easy to take down, really. Let's so remember, edge shock here is your best friend, so don't try and spam it <laughs> before coming here. And I can see I'm doing 3k and that's with and I don't even have his exclusive uh, his um Kikuchi Monji equipped so that's how powerful it is against this guy so as you can see he charges so the other buff is, is a defense buff and I believe a speed buff as well, so that's one thing to note as well. He's here, comes to 90. He also has one attack which I'm trying to use but I don't think I'm going to be able to get him to use and that's a missile. 
So when he uses the missile, that's a um, gravity-based attack, really. So it won't break you. It'll just do percentage damage to you. So don't worry if you see him using the missile. It won't break you. But right now, he's got well, the conditions to use his super hyper ultimate attack. So I'm going to show it off just so you guys see what it is. It's a bit scary, but because my character is quite leveled up, it's not as scary. But just be careful. As you can see, he just did a lot of damage. But he short circuits right after he uses it. But overall, this boss, I don't think, is that hard. I think of all the bosses introduced so far for the events, I believe this guy is to be the easiest of them all. Just remember, keep breaking him. If you keep breaking him, he'll short circuit and he won't be able to do anything. Dispel his buffs, but just remember that these buffs keep coming back. So sometimes you're going to have to just ignore the buffs and DP as much as you can. Edge will be your best friend here because Edge really does do a lot of damage to this guy. And the Kikuchi Monji is really good for because you end up doing crazy amounts of damage, which means your brave will just skyrocket. But overall, I can't imagine people having that hard of a time with it. But if you are having more hard times, just let me know, and I'll try and help you the best I can. Anyway, uh, Omega Weapon Mark II, thank you for being our test dummy today. <laughs> So that's pretty much the Balfour event in a nutshell, guys. I hope this video has been informative to you. I hope this video has been helpful to you. I thank you all so very much for taking the time to sit down and watch me talk about this game. I'm glad that you do, and I really appreciate it. As always, keep the comments coming in. And next up, I'll be talking about Balfour in the future. So if you want to stop here, you don't want to get any spoilers, then cut the video, and thank you all for watching. But for those curious, let's go in and talk about Balfour in the future. So, let's talk Balfour in the future. Unfortunately, Balfour, he kind of fades out, really. He becomes a pretty average and kind of slowish kind of character. But that's supposed to be because the power creep becomes so high that he kind of falls behind. Although Balfour does get an exclusive, his exclusive isn't enough to bring him up. Um, what Balfour's exclusive does is that it increases the multiplier of Graceful Aim to 1.4. It removes three debuffs from Balfour and then increases the, um, the debuff in stealing rate of uh, Graceful Aim and allows you to steal up to two um, buffs as well. And it also extends the duration of those buffs as well. So. Overall, it's a really good weapon, but unfortunately, he gets outpaced because at that point in the time, uh, Tidus gets his exclusive, and that exclusive puts Tidus into the really top tier. And Lightning is in the game as well at that point. Lightning and Tidus, for uh, at that period of time, were the king and queen of Opera Omnia. Those two will be used everywhere because of how good they are at that time in the game. And Unfortunately, it kind of throws shades on Balfour. Well, Balfour is still a good character and Graceful Aiming will still do a lot of damage if you got the 1.4 multiplier. But yeah, that's about it for Balfour. He doesn't have much else going for him. And unfortunately, he will then fade even more to obscurity once the level breaks come in and characters like Terra get their buffs, which makes her like godly and then Varn as well. Uh, at this time of the video, Balfour also doesn't have a level break either, so he's still stuck at 50, where like a lot of other characters are. Uh, March is coming along the corner, so we'll see if Balfour gets any luck in March. Uh, if not, then it'll be an even longer wait before his time will shine. But, yeah. I'm sorry, guys. I mean, as good Balfour is really good for the early game, but towards the mid game he will fade out and uh, right now Balfour is just in the low 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 tiers of characters at the moment but that's it anyway guys this is Matt's play this is my full review of the Balfour event I hope you all enjoyed 
I thank you all as always. Thank you really for watching and to commenting and for sharing and for liking the videos and for subscribing also. You guys are a real treat to me and thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Anyway, this is Metsplay. I hope you all enjoy it. And I'm over and out.